Friday. Welcome back all. Hope you guys are doing good. Very early in the morning. It is actually 2.25 a.m. Um, getting ready for a flight to Charlotte, North Carolina, so we can put on that event here this Saturday. I hope you guys are there. But I want to go over, you know, there's a couple articles everybody's concerned about, and it specifically talks about the devaluation of the Rocky Dinar. And so we're going to go over that a little bit and make sure, you know, pull this thing apart, make sure we know what we're talking about and be able to compare the statements with what's really going on. So let me read this a little bit. There's a couple of them here. I don't know how far I need to go to make a point, but a foreign exchange crunch caused by the drop of oil prices could force a devaluation of the Iraqi dinar, according to a report from Bloomberg. Data compiled by Bloomberg show that the dollar reserves fell by approximately 20% to $59 billion as of July 23rd, while in the last, for the first 25 days of August, the Central Bank of Iraq CBI sold 4.6 billion of currency to keep the dinar at its pegged rate at 1166 to the U.S. dollar. Frank Gunter, author of The Political Economy of Iraq, said that the currency could weaken as much as 20% over the next year, adding, Iraq's perfect storm means that the country will continue to lose reserves until the government of Iraq decides to devalue the dinar. Research from the Dubai-based bank Emirates NBD suggests that Iraq Dinar is one of the Middle East currencies most at risk of devaluation, but that the current exchange rate regime is likely to remain. London-based investment firm Exotics, its EXOTIX Partners LLP, said that maintaining the peg could cause Iraq's foreign currency reserve to drop to about $45 billion by the end of the next year. The authorities will try to hold on to the peg as long as possible, but may be forced to devalue if pressure continues, said Jacob Christensen, at Director of Exotics. Um, but while, uh, I don't see, it's, it's W-A-L-E-E-D-E-I-D-I. -E 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 -I. I don't even know how to say that name. A Director of General at the CBI told Bloomberg that the policy now is to meet the demand for dollars. <laughs> and what I've been telling you guys, for you know, the reserves won't be uh, depleted because of the oil sales and the dollar won't devalue. So, you know, everybody's in an uproar about these guys talking about the Nenar being devalued. And here's the thing, you guys. You know, again, what are they doing? They're, they're trying to pretend they know the market rate of the Dinar, and it's at some type of market rate, some type of supply and demand market rate. And it's simply not true. The first base that they can't get to is to understand is that it's a completely manipulated currency, and it's, and it's manipulated by the amount of notes that they have out there, just like any other country, just like any other currency. So, I mean, I don't know why they put these type of articles, to, you know, because there's a, it's a, a very niche market of people that has the dinar. It's not big. You know, back in the days, it probably was big. The liquidity of, you know, they created the dinar going back and forth, people buying and selling. You guys, that, that evaporated. You know, you have people that just couldn't afford to do it. They needed to sell the dinar to, uh, you know, you know, do whatever they need, take their kid to the dentist. Then you have the liquidity of the dinar showing up anyways because of, you know, they're actually, they went from $9 billion to $4 billion notes. And so, you know, that market is, is so it's, it's very strange that these guys would even come with up an article like that. You know, I never talk about smoke and mirrors, but, um, you know, it makes you wonder on this one because none of it makes sense. You know, it's, it's if the, let's say if the value of uh, the dinar should go down because the prices of oil has gone down. Well, then they keep the value up. They need to get rid of more dinar out of the market, right? And that's it. That's the only move they need to make. That's why at the very end of this article, it says um, one of the directors, the general, at the, uh, the general director at the CBI told Bloomberg, the policy now is to meet the demand for dollars. The reserves won't be depleted because of oil sales, and the dinar won't devalue. So it's, you know, like I said, it's a very strange articles that come out. And I, I, I've never seen an article ever that talked about any country's currency. And I don't know, like I said, you guys, usually it's the conspiracy that's the conspiracy. Um, you know, trying to throw people off the track. I, I don't know. I can't figure this one out. But so let me read the, a little bit of the next one. Um, 
Yeah, currency crisis adds fuel to Iraq's fight against ISIS. And they're coming at a completely different angle, but they end up tying it with the same definition um, that the, the one at the foreign exchange crunch caused by the drop of oil prices. A devaluation of the dinar risks making the fight against Islamic State militants even tougher. Any currency crisis usually comes with a dire consequence for a country that, or and the threat of one of Iraq shows how then that can go beyond the economy and markets. A foreign exchange crunch because of the drop of oil prices could force a devaluation of the dinar and risk making the fight against Islamic State militants even tougher. The nation, currently OPEC's biggest producer after Saudi Arabia, is dependent on oil revenue to fund its operations on the battlefield and quell the growing uh, unrest over the economy. Dollar reserves tumbled about 20% to $59 billion as of uh, yeah, the 23rd of July since the fighters escalated a year before, and the losses are accelerating. And the first 25 days of August, the central bank sold $4.6 billion of its currency to keep it R at a pegged rate. A daily outflow of about 184 million um, data compiled by Bloomberg. So it's the same thing, different angle. All right. So they're saying that you know, with the pace, trying to keep up with the ISIS. The other article is talking about just specifically because the oil dropped. It doesn't make any sense. Because you know, what did they just say? They're dependent on oil. What's oil bought and sold in U.S. dollars? So it doesn't. Nothing. Nothing makes any sense. Um, so very strange. And I'm not going to try to look. You know, I, and for the sake of it, this isn't a, like a moral issue or anything like that, but for the sake of not being a false witness, um, you know what I mean? I'm not going to try to pick these guys, you know, their, you know, the, the whys on why they put something like this together because it's completely bunk. You know, if, like I said, it's very simple. What's the solution if a rock has to sell oil for cheaper? Yeah, how would they want to keep their, the value of their currency? It's almost like, you know, these people never talk about that they can put more currency back into the market. They can print more currency. They can mint coins um, if they need to coming up. and Or they can take a certain block of amount of currency off the market. It, they never talk about in almost every article I've ever read about any currency. It's very rare where it's talked about. You know, think about the U.S. dollar. You know, again, just, just a, a, you know, a cross example. You know, what are they talking about? That people are saying, well, the BRICS are going after the U.S. dollar, and China's doing this, and, you know, all these kind of, But, you know, what are we doing in the background? We're printing the hell out of our own currency. That's what's causing it to value. And again, you know, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't know what the difference would be if someone knew the truth compared to what these guys are trying to program everybody to do. I don't think these guys are part of any type of uh, large media output that they're trying to get people to think one way. Because, again, at the, you know, the, both, the bottom of both of these articles, the general director of the CBI specifically stated that they're trying to meet the demand for the dollars. And the reserve won't deplete because of oil sales and the dollar. So, you know, that statement from the people who actually controls the policy, what's put together by the Ministry of Finance and then the Ministry of Planning, you know, these guys have power. And that's why I said, you guys, it always depends on where it's coming from. And, you know, it's like wasted air because at the bottom of these articles, they just said, no, that's not going to happen. So why even print the article? You know, wasted space. So anyways, I wanted to be able to point a couple things out and just break that thing apart. I don't I don't need to break. There's more stuff we could probably talk about and point out. But you guys, that's it. That's it. The competition with the dinar is the U.S. dollar. And they're selling their oil in U.S. dollars. So they're not worried too much about um, the market rate for the dinar because it's artificially – uh, manipulated anyways. I mean, the, you know, to understand, to make a profit in what's coming down the road for a rock, you have to understand that first. You have to understand that it used to be at a $3 rate, and it was at a billion notes, and then that they printed a new currency, and they printed a ton of them in two different stages, and that, the, you know, the governor of the CBI said, look, we are going to get the value of this currency back up. But we're going to reduce the note count in the meantime. So, you know, that's that's always been the game. How long can you and I stand it? There was always a threat of the law. And that was just getting rid of the, you know, they wouldn't have gotten rid of one one note off the market. They would have just said, hey, let's pretend those zeros are not on it. We'll just, you know, we'll go from there. They didn't do that. They went the complete opposite direction. They started getting rid of the physical notes. 
So everything's been answered. You know, it's just a question of time. But um, anyway, so I hope that helped you guys on those articles. Let me, let me go through a couple questions here. Can you explain how selling bonds takes dollars off the market? I don't see that happening given the fact that other countries and companies are buying these bonds, not local people. How does taking dollar out of the local market, does that see, that doesn't see, well, the, the one thing that, you, uh, that you're missing is that you have to buy the bonds in U.S. dollars. And I know that local people are taking off the market, but remember, it's, you know, a lot of these entities, you know, specifically like the United States or, you know, Russia or China, they never do anything for just one reason. It's always multiple reasons. You know, so they want to take dollars out of the market in Iraq. They want to put those dollars in the reserve. You know, what was the what was the statement in the articles that I just read that, you know, the general director uh, the, of the CBI told Bloomberg that the policy now is to, to, meet, is to meet the demand of the dollar. And, um, you know, and, and there's a couple things that are involved that. They're worried about the U.S. dollar. They want it. And they also don't want the people to have it at the same time. So when you say that countries and uh, uh, other companies are buying it, they're trying to build up their dollar reserve. Now, here's another thing. It actually answers another question. A lot of people are saying, you know, is, um, you guys, there's a lot of propaganda out there talking about how they're going to replace the uh, U.S. dollar. The IMF is prompt to do it. Um, you know, they don't, they can't tell a country what currency to buy. They don't have that type of authority. They can't just say, hey, make well, wave a magic wand. Your guys' currency is this uh, price. And, you know, you know, the IMF never gave the United States loans. We give the, uh, the IMF money. So they can't tell us what to do with our currency. You know, it's not like Iraq where they gave Iraq loans. And they actually have management rights, just like they did with India and uh, these other, um, you know, uh, countries that are trying to, uh, you know, raise the standard of their currency. It, it's it's very strange because it's kind of counter what I talk about. You know, these countries they try to stay at a certain level um, so they can compete. It's it's you know it's cheaper to do business with them. But that's you guys. That's a mixed bag of politics and uh, policy. We'll go over that here pretty soon. But you know the IMF doesn't have that type of authority. The IMF can't wave a magic wand to where um, you know the dollar is not the standard. You know they can they they let me put it this way. They can make a statement, an official statement from the IMF, but they don't have the authority. You know, all of a sudden, all the countries are going to just change and, and use a different currency. It doesn't work that way, you guys. It does. They don't have that type of authority. And they wouldn't exist the very next day anyways. So don't worry about that. So that, that kind of answers two questions um, on how important the dollar is and why Iraq is selling bonds only for the U.S. dollar and other countries, and you're trying to get those dollars from other countries and companies. So... Let me say, hi, Tony, do you have a feeling for a time frame for a significant change in the dinar value? It's been rel uh, relatively the same for a very long time. I know you are profitable, uh, but most of us here, out here, have been in a stationary mode. Um, have a blessed day. Well, it's, look, there's a couple ways you have to look at it. You haven't been in a stationary mode because you got out of the U.S. dollar into the dinar. And I know people don't want to hear this. They want to know when it's going to revalue. But this is the game, you guys. You know, if, if I was to go into an investment and there wasn't a, there was not going to be a huge um, revaluation in the currency, I, I would have still looked at the dinar because knowing the value of the U.S. dollar has got to go down, how much will the dinar go up? You know, it's a 27% return so far. You know, you just beat the S&P 500. Um, it, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable, but, you know, it's, you have gained. You just don't realize it because... People don't count on the value of the dollar going down. So, you know, you're looking for, a, a, you know, a hard revaluation. It should have been here. So that's the time frame. It should have been here. They've, you know, think about it. They, you know, they get the note to a billion. It should be around $3. And their last report that we got was at $4 billion. You saw what we did with the 50 dinar note. You know they're pulling a little bit off whenever they can. Um, you guys, just so you know, it's not an exact science. They're not, you know, taking tons of notes. And the next day, they might put a few of those notes back on as they go back and forth from the auction floor. It ebbs and flows. It, it really does go back and forth. So just remember that. You know, there's never going to be an exact day or anything like that. It's all, you know, it's these guys have to respond to the market. And 
you know, the people that can control the market or the major entities can control the liquidity of it, but they don't control fully anything. Just so you know, I mean, the stock market it is manipulated, but it's you know they can push the liquidity. So you know that that, that type of reasoning. So, anyways, look, you, you should be good. You know, it's it's not far away. You know, there's a reason they're coming out with bonds. The reason they're after the U.S. dollar. There's a reason they got rid of the note count. Um, that they're lowering it. There's a reason they passed these laws. And there's a reason these articles come out on the dinar is going to devalue because the oil's dropped. It means nothing. The two don't don't fit because, like I said, it's not a market rate for the currency itself. So let me let me finish with this, you guys. Look, I'll be in Charlotte September 5th this weekend. September 19th, I'll be in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'll probably put the address up tonight when I'm actually in Charlotte. Finish with my flights here. October 3rd, we're going to be in Tampa, Florida. October 19th, we're going to be in Michigan. So make sure you write these dates down if you're in that area because, um, you know, I don't have the exact address for uh, Tampa and Michigan yet. But, you know, I want people to, I want to give people plenty of time to register. The more uh, time there's people to, you know, I give people to register, um, there's more people at the event. So, you know, this is what I need you to do. Go to Brightling Currency, or I'm sorry, Brightling Events at gmail.com. And just your name that's on your ID and what event you're attending. And because I'm trying to get people to register now, give people a little bit more time. And I'll get the, uh, the exact locations of these events up pretty soon. So one more time, Charlotte this weekend, September 5th. And I'll have that up tonight, the address. Um, just register anyways. Just say, you know, just say your name and what, your, uh, what event you're going to be in. September 19th will be in Nashville, Tennessee. October 3rd will be in Tampa, Florida. And October 19th, we'll be in Michigan. And then we'll be selling, setting it up for uh, Tulsa, L.A., Denver, and San Francisco, and then here in Scottsdale. Um, and not, not necessarily in that order, you guys, but you know, we have a lot of events coming up. Hope you guys can show up. I love these things. The people that show up, you, you know, like I said, I, I, I show people the best of the best. How is it that you make money? How, even with this market, with the crash, you know, the, or, you know, the, uh, the stock going down. Killed it, you guys. Absolutely killed it. And I'll answer any question that you have about Dinar, the politics in Iraq, or just um, currency and policy in general, as far as how these markets work and stuff like that. And you guys will love it. You'll get educated. And I will introduce you to the best of the best. Hope to see you there. Until the next audio, everybody, God bless. Thanks all.